the visualization worksheet is the second and final worksheet that you'll complete for major assignment three. Here, you'll take the same difference data that you calculated on the analysis worksheet, and you're going to present this as a histogram that you'll develop from a frequency distribution table. You'll start by calculating a bin minimum, maximum, and width for your data. Your data is reproduced in column B here, B12. It goes all the way down through B61. And for your bin table, you're going to want to take a minimum that's a little below the data minimum and a maximum that's a little bit above the data maximum. So let's say that the bin minimum will be the minimum of the differences minus an additional 0 0.1. The maximum is the maximum of the differences plus an additional 0 0.1. And then the width will be the max minus the min in the numerator divided by the number of bins in the denominator. Now, the number of bins here is just going to be the number of rows in this frequency distribution table. So count these rows, and that will be the denominator for your bin width calculation. Also note that we want to format all three of these values as number with two decimals. Once we have our bin table characteristics, we can now calculate our frequency distribution entries. The lower limit and upper limit entries will be the cutoff points for each of the bins. And this will be equally distributed from the minimum to the maximum. We'll start with the first lower limit being equal to the bin minimum. And then from there, each upper limit will advance the lower limit by the bin width so that we have bin width for each of our rows. And then the next lower limit will be equal to the previous upper limit. Note that if we do our lower limit and upper limit formulas correctly, then the first lower limit should equal our bin minimum and our final upper limit should match our bin maximum. For the title of bin entries, we'll want to use the average of the lower limit and the upper limit. There are several ways to do this. You could use the average function. You could add the lower limit and upper limit in the numerator and divide by 2 in the denominator. You could even use the median of the two values here. In any case, title of bin will be the midpoint of the lower limit and upper limit for each row. And a double check here to make is that the title of bin entry is actually in the range of the lower limit and upper limit. So that's a indication. One, for example, our first value 0.18 is between minus 0.10 and plus 0.46. So that's reasonable. Our middle value, uh, 2.96, is between 2.68 and 3.23, and so on. For the frequency column, we now want to allocate numbers of data points between each lower limit and upper limit. So for the first value here in G28, we want to know how many of these data values fall between minus 0.10 and plus 0.46. In the second 
cell uh, G29, we want to know how many of the values fall between 0.46 and 1.01, and so on. Here, too, there are several strategies for using this. Uh, you may want to take a look at your written resources or refer back to your work on topic 5DQ2. Uh, in any case, note that the total of the frequency entries here should end up being the total number of data because each data point is going to be allocated to one of the bins. So as a double check on the frequency column, we add up the entries and we see that we do add up to 50, which is the number of data points that we have. Here, make sure to format your frequency column entries as number with zero decimals rather than general. That's one that a lot of people tend to overlook. In the relative frequency column, you'll just divide the frequency by the number of data points. So for the first formula in H28, you'll divide the entry in G28 by the number of data points. Here, you have to use a formula in the denominator. So don't just put the hard-coded value 50 in the denominator. You have to use a formula for this. And for the relative frequency column, you want to format it as percentage with zero decimal places. Here, as a double check for the relative frequencies, they should all add up to 100%. And as another check, the relative frequency will just be the frequency times 2%. Uh, and that's due to the fact that we have 50 um, data points, so each data point represents 2%. Also remember to format the relative frequency as percentage with zero decimals. The final item for this sheet is to create a histogram from the title of bin and frequency columns with the title of bin items being the labels and the frequency items being the bar heights. There's a trick to this because both title of bin and frequency are numeric columns. So if you select both of those and then simply insert the first bar chart that shows up, you'll end up with a bar chart that has two columns per or two uh, bars per item. So here's how you do this. You select the title of bin and frequency columns. From the insert menu, you go to the column or bar chart item, but instead of selecting a 2D column chart here, See how we have both of the columns showing up as separate bars. We'll want to go to more column charts down at the bottom. From the more column charts, we will select the ch chart on the right hand side here. This one will give us what we want the title of bin items as the labels and the frequency entries as the heights. So we select that chart, we press OK, and this now inserts this chart for us. We also will have to add horizontal and vertical axis titles and change the chart title from here. And after we've completed the chart, it might look something like what you see here. That concludes the visualization worksheet for major assignment three. And this is your final assignment for Math 144. So congratulations.